Hi everyone, Dave here. So I've had the iPhone 12 for a couple of months now and I've been using it as my main phone ever since it arrived. I went for the black colour with 128GB of storage as I like to store a lot of videos and photos on it. After watching the launch video I was originally convinced by the new blue colour but I changed my mind at the last minute and went for the black. When a whole bunch of new colours gets launched it's easy to overlook the classic black or white phones but when this thing arrived I knew I had made the right choice. Although I expect if you've bought any of the new colours they would also look good. If you slap a case on it then I suppose it doesn't really matter anyway. So let's kick things off with the new design. As a bit of background, my previous iPhones were the iPhone 3GS and the iPhone 4S. I had the iPhone 4S in white and really loved the design. I loved the boxy shape, glass back and stainless steel sides. Having a white phone was very different for me at the time as well. As soon as I saw the keynote with the new iPhone 4S design, I knew I was going to order it. It arrived in the new slim box and as soon as I unboxed it, I loved it. I was tempted to go for the mini as I thought it would remind me of the iPhone 4S a little bit more but I've got used to bigger phones now and I find the 6.1 inch screen a perfect size for me. The overall size of the iPhone 12 was almost identical to my old Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge with a 5.5 inch screen so I kind of knew it would be the great size. This sounds completely nerdy but I actually drew the sizes out of a piece of paper for the Mini, Normal and Max to get an idea of how they might appear in real life. Normally I would have just gone to the Apple shop but due to Covid this was not really an option. I then compared the cutouts to my current phone at the time and other objects like my calculator. When I saw the Max was almost the same size as my calculator I knew that was a no go for me. It seems that quite a lot of reviewers think the Pro Max is too big for most people too. Here's a quick size and design comparison between my wife's iPhone 7 Plus and the iPhone 12. I love the black colour on this phone, especially with the matte black aluminium sides. I definitely prefer this look over the glossy stainless steel sides of the Pro. For me, I love the boxy shape and it just feels nice in the hand with a decent amount of weight to it. I'm currently using a Toras crystal case on it as it's pretty thin and I kind of get to see the black of the phone. I've done a separate video on this case so check that out if you're interested but lately I've been looking at different cases and I'm tempted to purchase something else. If I do I'll sure to make a video on it. So yeah overall the design I personally love it as it's very reminiscent of the iPhone 4S. When it comes to the screen a lot of other reviewers have moaned about the lack of high refresh rates such as 90 or 120 hertz. For me personally I'm not bothered by this mainly because I've never experienced it apart from a quick go on an iPad Pro. Perhaps they could have put this feature in on the Pro versions to help differentiate them a bit I wouldn't, and I wouldn't be surprised if they do that for the iPhone 13 variants but it's not really, really a deal breaker for me. Apart from that the OLED screen on this looks great to my eyes. It's got great contrast, the colours pop and is nice and crispy. I remember watching reviews last year of the iPhone 11 and a lot of people mentioned that the screen was getting a lot of micro scratches, even from people really looking after their phones. So I immediately bought a screen protector for this phone. But as usual I was super lazy and never got around to actually putting it on. So after two months of putting it in and out of my pockets there appears to be no micro scratches whatsoever. As you can see here it still looks pretty brand new. I attribute this to the ceramic shield that Apple touted during the keynote. So I don't think I'll bother with the screen protector now as I prefer using phones without them anyway. When it comes to battery life I'm pretty impressed but I suppose this depends on what phone you're coming from. With my Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge I would normally charge it after one day of normal use. So if I started with 100% battery by the time it came round to go into bed there was about 10-20% to 20 left. So I just got used to charging the phone every night. With the iPhone 12 however, I've been putting it on charge every two days. So if I started using the phone at 100% on a Monday morning, I wouldn't actually need to charge it until Tuesday evening when I go to bed. So for me, I find this extremely impressive. I'm usually left with about 60% after one day of use. And I suppose this depends on how you use your phone though. 
if you sit on the sofa all day and watch YouTube, do some video editing and play games, then I doubt you'll get two days like me. To give you an idea of usage, I have an average screen on time of nearly 4 hours and 40 minutes a day, with my most used apps being YouTube, Netflix, Safari and Instagram. According to the stats, I pick my phone up around 70 times a day. I respond to messages, check my health data, browse the internet, browse Instagram, read the news, and then watch YouTube for a bit in the evening. And sometimes my kids will use it to watch Netflix. I don't tend to play many games on it though. When it comes to charging, I didn't bother going with the MagSafe charger. I was really tempted at first, but decided to go with the standard Apple USB-C fast charger and a Mophie 3-in-1 wireless charger. For the way I charged my phone, I didn't really see much benefit from having a wireless charger that sticks to the back of the phone when you pick it up. I'd rather just use a regular charger connected to the lightning port. And when I use the Mophie wireless charger, I like being able to pick my phone up without any wires attached and then just put it back on the stand to charge. Plus, I like this charger as I can charge the watch, phone and earpods at the same time using just the one plug. Speaking of MagSafe, I haven't really seen any accessories apart from the car holder that I would actually want to buy, so I can't really comment on how useful it is. When it comes to the cameras, I'm pretty impressed as long as there's good light. If you're indoors with poor light, then yeah, it's okay, but it's not amazing. I mainly use my Fuji X-T3 for photos and videos, but having the iPhone is great for quick snapshots when I don't have my main camera with me. I'm really impressed with the image stabilisation though in video mode. Here is a video of my son riding a scooter. The camera is set to 4K 24 frames a second and I'm using the ultra wide camera. I'm walking pretty fast here at a probably almost like jogging, trying to keep a steady hand as I go. As you can see it's come out pretty smooth. This is exactly the thing I want when I'm running around with my kids. Plus, it's so easy just having something this good in your pocket. I wondered if I would miss having the telephoto camera of the Pro models, but honestly, I don't. The wide and ultra wide are just fine for me. This is also my first experience with the Face ID. I love this feature. It just seems so quick at unlocking your phone, it's dead easy. I used to have a fingerprint scanner on my old Samsung phone, but it wouldn't always work, so I ended up just turning it off and using a passcode instead. I'd say the biggest downside of Face ID is if you're out and about with a face mask on, and it just doesn't work at all then. But then you just have to revert to the passcode, so it's not a massive deal. Overall, the performance has been great with the A14 chip. Everything is just snappy and works fine. I haven't really got any complaints. For my needs, the regular version had all the features I wanted, and I didn't really see any need to go for the Pro version. If you're an iPhone fan, I'm sure you'll love it. If anyone's actually still listening this far in, then wow, thanks. Thanks for listening all the way to the end. That's pretty amazing. If you drop a message, made it in the comments, then I'll make sure to give it a thumbs up and give a reply back. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.